Atta Ame Oboni, the Nigerian king who preferred suicide rather than bowing to Queen Elizabeth II of England. At a particular meeting held in Kaduna, which consisted of all the paramount traditional rulers in Nigeria and with the late Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II in attendance, Atta Ame was asked to remove his cap to salute the Queen as others had done. Although he refused until they said he should leave the meeting if he didn't take off his cap. It was a taboo for Atta to remove his cap in public. Finally, however, Atta yielded to request and as soon as he removed his cap, a lot of bees came out of it. Immediately, the meeting room was full of bees. Everyone ran away as soon as it happened. Unfortunately, the bees stung some people and this led to an abrupt end to the meeting. Queen Elizabeth as well as the other rulers at the meeting ran held to skelter with the exception of the friendly Oba of Benin, who was asked to go out by Atta Ame before removing his cap. But what led to this chaos and what happened after the accident? In today's episode, I bring to you an account of the insights of Atta Ame Uboni, the Nigerian king who committed suicide rather than bow to his late queen, Elizabeth II. Welcome to Angie's The Radical. Before we continue, please take a second to subscribe to my channel for more related content. There once lived a king named Atta Ame Oboni in Nigeria. He was highly respected among his subjects and subordinates. He is believed to possess such great superpowers. Then came the day when he met with the greatest monarch, Her Excellency Queen Elizabeth II of England. It was an encounter that changed his life and the fate of his people forever. King Atta Ume Oboni was born in 1911 in the village of Ogwaloa, near Kogi State, Nigeria. As a young man, he became the heir apparent to the throne of Atta. Eventually, he ascended the throne and ruled Igala land for 10 years. He expanded the local schools and the Igala kingdom witnessed the economic boom during his reign as king. Apart from being a traditional African ruler, Atta was very powerful. He could speak powerfully and his predictions would come to pass. His pronouncements always became reality. Many people were aware of his magical powers and were amazed at this unique supernatural ability that he had. If someone misbehaved, disobeyed or insulted Azza, he had the power to say what would happen to them. He never held back on his words when necessary. Whenever he spoke, it happened immediately. As ruler, Atta's position came with many things to do and many to avoid. Some of these traditional requirements were completely unusual. As a king, he wasn't allowed to see dead bodies. He could not take off his cap in the presence of people and could not shake hands with women. Unfortunately, some of these rules later caused him problems. He refused to obey the queen and was punished. There was a meeting in Kaduna and many traditional rulers attended it. The queen was also present. While other kings took off their caps when they greeted the queen, Atta was unwilling to do so. Unlike the others, he could not remove his cap in public, nor could he shake the queen's hands. What was he to do? After such persistence and threats to expel him and dethrone him if he refuses to remove his cap, Atta was forced to take it off and try to bow to the king. He had a lot at stake and any detronment would deter his descendants from ascending to the throne. He is seen by his people as a mini-god and bowing to a human seems like an insult. Atta yielded to the demand and as soon as he removed his cap, a lot of bees came out of it. Immediately, the meeting hall was filled with bees. Everyone ran away as soon as this happened. Unfortunately, some people were stung by the bees and this brought the meeting to an abrupt end. While all this was going on, Atta advised another king, Oba of Benin, to go outside before removing his cap. The Aftermath After the unfortunate incident with bees, Atta Ame Oboni was asked to be arrested and handcuffed by security men, which they did, but the handcuffs fell off his hands. He was later imprisoned in a chamber on the orders of the northern rulers and guarded by security personnel, but only to later find out by the personnel that he had disappeared from the room. Yes. And when security was taking him to be locked up, he told his driver, Amanabo of blessed memory, to take the car and be going to Ida while the security locked him in the room. He then warned Amanabo not to look back until he feels a cool breeze in the car. Although Amanabo argued a little that he couldn't leave the Atta there, but later he obeyed and started driving back to Ida from Kaduna. After some time, he felt the cool breeze in the car and Atta Ame was seated inside the car. The incident in the meeting made many of the traditional rulers who were mostly northerners to be angry, especially making kings run in such a manner because of the bees and the unusual manner in which the meeting ended. 
Queen Elizabeth was not happy either. And they, the Queen and the Northern Chiefs, started looking for a way to remove Atta Ame from the throne since he was getting tougher and uncontrollable like others, as well as searching for an obedient replacement. Igala has many cultural festivals, one of which is the Ocho. The Ocho is celebrated before farming begins, which is a time when Atta Igala prays to God for sufficient rainfall. Abundant harvest, success in hunting. It is celebrated in the bush and the venue is called the Ere Ocho, where the Atta will hunt until he kills a buffalo or a strong animal. The community in Ida, where Ocho takes place, is called the Ogo Efa. He performs a little sacrifice to the ancestors by using a fowl in the process and this was to find out if there will be blessings or troubles in the land after the Ocho. Before this time, the enemies back at home among the Igala people, especially those who had connections with the northern regional leaders, were working hard to get any evidence, either true or false, which can be used to dethrone him. The animal blood used to sacrifice at Ocho on ground now became what the enemies would use against him. A petition was written by two Igala people to the queen and some other northern leaders that Atta Ame was sacrificing human beings during the Ocho festivals. Since they were looking for any means to remove him, judgment was quickly passed that he must be dethroned, even when investigations were not yet concluded. In addition, all Igala cultural festivals, including the Ocho, were immediately banned, and this remained for about 63 years until Governor Yahaya Bello overturned the ban on the appeal of the present Atta Igala. Already before this time, the Oba of Benin, who had such a friction with the British, had already been dethroned and exiled from Benin. So Atta Ame Oboni knew that at that point, no matter what spiritual approach applied, it could only postpone the evil day as his enemies would never relent until he was removed by them. The results of a blood sample which was taken from the Ocho venue and taken to the University of Ibadan for analysis had arrived and it was found to be animal blood, not the blood of a human. Sadly, the revered king Atta Ame died before the result was brought. But Atta Ame being very sure that his enemies wrongly accused and framed him up, especially those from Igala who wrote the petition against him, marking the beginning of his planned dethronement, made a few statements before his death. He is alleged to have said that the person who wrote the petition against him would have that hand dried up, and that the leader of the gang or petitioners would be buried three times, and they all came to pass. While the hand dried up as was said, the other was buried, as stated, the first was a leg, second being his hand, and third was himself, all buried at various times at different locations. In addition, as this information about his dethronement was given to him at a meeting from where he was supposed to go back to Ida and prepare to leave the throne, he stopped on his way in another land of Igala called Dekina. This was where he committed suicide. Before taking his own life, he is allegedly quoted to have said that the town Dekina will be popular but its development will not be as much as its popularity. He was also quoted as saying that because Igala was the genesis of his ordeal, there will be a disunity among the people of Igala as the reign of his own blood, or the son, as Atta, and all Igalas regardless of the location to be united again. I believe from the recognition and unification of the Igala people across Nigeria and beyond which had been going on and still going on under and after the reign of his son, Agabaidu Idako Ame Oboni II, the 27th Atta Igala, that the proclamation of reunification of the Igala people also came through. Atta Idako Ame took reign on the 10th of March 2013 before joining his ancestors on 27th of August 2020, after which a new Atta Igala, Atta Matthew Apalua Akba II, the 28th Atta Igala of the Igala Kingdom, was selected by the Igala Traditional Council on April 28, 2021, as Atta designated and confirmed on October 18, 2021, following an official approval by the Kogi State Executive Council in Lokoja, the state's capital about a year after Idako Ame's demise. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to hit the notification bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded.